this girl returned to her room, she suddenly discovered a bloodied man lying beneath the floor. The National Security Agency was frantically searching outside for someone. What is the identity of this young man? Will he escape the pursuit from the police? Let's go! The main young Aro is a virtuous girl, or she might be a student at Hosa Girls School. A school with very strict regulations, so she had to disregard the danger of the flowing wall to make it to roll call on time after coming back late. Inside, the principal was conducting room-by-room -room inspections, checking under every bed to ensure not even an ant could escape. Everyone in young Aro room was extremely tense and worried for her. Missing roll call in the dorm means instant expulsion from school. When young Aro reached the window, the headmistress was already at the door. Buyoke quickly exclaimed that I saw a big mouse. Taking the chance, they swiftly ushered her into the room and assisted with her nightwear. They managed to slip past the headmistress. After she left, everyone collapsed onto the bed with relief. Suddenly, I remembered I had forgotten the box of rice cakes. She ran down to the security guard's room to ask for it back, then thanked him with a small gift, the security guards highly regarded by everyone in the school. Before returning to her room, she also remembered to bring a little something to Bunoke. Bunoke asking her to find the English version of Romeo and Juliet for me, she happily agreed, then returned to the room and started a show. For people, for different personalities, but they always enjoyed each other's company during the best days of their college lives. The next morning, young Aro brought the book she had found to Bunoke. They sat together chatting when someone called, and young Aro helped Bunoke answer the phone. On the other end was someone who greatly admired her messy hair, his name was Kwang Tae. But young Aro seemed rather indifferent. But when she heard the invitation for a group date, young Aro's expression instantly changed. She quickly noted down the time and location for the meeting. Bunoke managed to join, noticing young Aro's hesitant attitude. She feigned tears, explaining that as a non-student, group dates like this would be challenging for her. Young Aro was very confused. Young Aro had no choice but to persuade the messy-haired girl. Even though she didn't like it because it felt like lying. But because Bunoke had saved them, she agreed. Finally, the day of the date arrived. At the cafe, the four guys had already arrived early. In contrast to Quante's nervous demeanor, the main guy sat calmly, arranging matchsticks. Quante hastily stood to introduce himself, accidentally toppling the main guy's matchstick tower. He and Young Aro both reached out to try to catch it. The moment their eyes met, it sent her heart racing. Bunoke arrived, everyone sat down together and started chatting. After discussing, they decided to find out their respective dates by having the girls choose an item representing each guy. The girls closed their eyes as the guys placed their items on the table. After the four items were on the table, the girls chose the items they liked. Bunoke chose the paper plane because she knew it was Suho's item. Jian chose the certificate paper. When the main girl reached for the lighter, a guy shook his head. She reached for the pen, he nodding. Bunoke quickly snatched the paper plane. The main guy and young Aro exchanged a regretful glance. Young Aro go to the bookstore and her favorite song started playing. This makes her excited and she starts singing loudly. This has attracted the attention of everyone, including the main guy. He thinks she's interesting. As she leaves, she bumps into him. She asks aren't you going to the concert with Boon okay? Suho casually mentions he's busy and asks, didn't you break up with my friend too? Young Aro awkwardly heads to the cashier but finds she's short on cash. She decides not to buy it after all. Suho calls her back, hands her the tape as a gesture of acquaintance, then swiftly departs. Young Aro hurriedly follows, spotting police checks near a tree, prompting him to swiftly turn into an alley. She also runs over and slips the tape into his pocket. The police rush over to check if he's the person they're looking for. Young Aro and he feign a lover's quarrel. The policemen saw this and immediately left to avoid bringing harm to themselves. Young Aro regains her composure, and Suho teases her about becoming an actress. Instead of a singer, making her embarrassed and leaving, Suho tries to say something as he notices they're being watched, so he stays silent. He just hands her the tape, says thanks, and leaves. Knowing that missing this chance might mean not seeing him again, she inviting him for coffee the next day. Main guy doesn't appear, disappointing Young Aro. 
The next six months, he and two teammates come to pick up Professor Han without realizing they're being followed by National Security Agency. Han now orders a car to ram into Suho's car. The collision knocks Professor Han and one of his teammates unconscious, while Suho and the driver, Ju, sustain head injuries. Ju opens the car door and flees, while Suho breaks open the back door and runs away. The police immediately give chase. Meanwhile, military exercises are taking place on the streets, creating chaos. Suho manages to climb through a fallen window into a room. The police follow the trail of blood and enter the dormitory. Young Aro returns first, noticing flickering light, sensing trouble. She cautiously approached the window, startled to find a man covered in blood lying on the floor. Even more surprising, the man was Suho. Young Aro composed himself, swiftly wiping blood, seal he fell in shock. Hai Ryong and Young Min rush back, stunned, frozen in debate on what to do. Young Aro and Young Min argue for hiding him, mistaking him for a protesting student. Hai Ryong and Seal he wanted to turn him over to the police for fear of implicating themselves. After debate, they opt to hide Suho from police. In the dormitory head's room, the atmosphere was extremely tense. Returning to seek a search warrant, fearing Suho would be trapped like a rat if found. While awaiting the warrant, police surveyed outside, spotting bloodstains leading to Young Aro's room. Han Na, holding the search warrant, rushed in straight to 207 room. They tried to open the door, but it was locked. The police burst in, only to find no one in the room except Hai Ryong. The headmistress noticed the bloodstain, understanding immediately. She didn't suspect Hai Ryong and protected her during police questioning, realizing the others were still in the bathroom. Suho was hidden under a chair by the three girls. Hearing someone approaching, they undressed to seem innocent. Outside, the headmistress tried to stop police from entering, concerned about the girl's honor while bathing. Understanding, Han Na decided to investigate alone. Entering, she heard faint singing from the three girls. Despite their fear, they continued singing to distract themselves and keep calm. While Han Na inspected the bathroom, Suho's blood started dripping, causing panic among all. This made Han Na suspicious. Why are you so scared? Why are you crying? They all remained silent, as the blood continued to spread closer to Han Na's feet. Young Aro stood up and shouted. If you hold a gun like that, we should be scared. Han Na realized she was holding a gun. She smiled and quickly left. Suho finally let out a sigh of relief. They hid Suho inside the cabinet. Then Seal He and Young Min turned back towards while Young Aro stayed to clean the floor. I want to thank you for buying me the tape. Politicians were singing victory songs inside. Minister of Defense Chan Su received a call that two spies had escaped, only catching the driver and Professor Han. He informed the ruling party's secretary, Nam Tae. They were shaking hands to execute the Phoenix Plan by funding North Korea to bring Professor Han, the leader of the opposition party, to South Korea, taking photos, then giving them to media, alleging opposition outpaced president with money. The failed plan jeopardized Nam Tae's election prospects. He angrily went to the office of Dr. Kong, she advised him not to think too much and just go to Beijing for the meeting. In a dark room, the police were interrogating Suho's teammate, but no matter how hard they tried, he wouldn't reveal any information, took advantage when the police weren't paying attention. The next day, main guy was feeling better, but the police still kept watch outside, trapping him in the dormitory. If still like this, he'll surely be discovered. Everyone discussed letting Suho on fourth floor. This was a room that had been empty for many years because of the ghost legend. Young Aro hurried to the security guard, asking to open the door. The security guard reluctantly opened the door to the room. That night, they executed the plan. For people quietly moved upstairs. When they entered the room, they all felt a chilling sensation. Even though he was scared, Young Aro still calmly reassured everyone. Then Young Min packed things, and Young Aro helped Suho bandage his wound. She felt very awkward in front of Suho. The next morning, Young Aro woke up early, packed the box into the backpack. In no time, the two girls had gathered enough food for Suho to eat for the whole week. Young Aro happily returned and went to brush her teeth and wash her face at the public restroom. After finishing, she brought the food upstairs for Suho. 
They sat together and confided in each other. Her brother was arrested for participating in protests and was conscripted into the military. Budoke reminds Young Aro to be careful because the principal has become suspicious. Young Aro is very worried. But she still brings food up for Suho. Young Aro asks about the necklace. She feels uncomfortable knowing that it's a gift from someone to him. She quickly leaves. The next morning, she angrily refuses to get up, but still has to bring food up to Suho. She doesn't stay for the usual chat, she leaves right away. Suho falls, causing panic among the people downstairs, who scatter in fear. It's Saturday, and the dorms allow visits. Young Aro's brother has come to see her. He called her from downstairs. She ran down to him joyfully like a child. In the evening, while Young Aro helped Suho change his bandage, he asked her about the man from the morning and learned he was her brother. He also told Young Aro that the necklace was a gift from her when he enlisted, so he treasured it deeply. Upon hearing this, Young Aro smiled, realizing her anger since morning had been futile. She stood up to leave but accidentally spilled a glass of water. She grabbed a towel to dry it and went to wash it. However, due to long neglect, water to leak downstairs. A student was certain someone was on the floor above and immediately reported it to the principal. The principal called the security guard to investigate. Meanwhile, the lovebirds were still figuring out how to safely evacuate Suho without being detected. On their way, the security guard made loud noises to signal their escape. He pretended to look for keys to delay, damaging the light to obscure their actions. After inspection, although someone had been there before, the principal couldn't find anyone outside. They were now standing precariously on a narrow ledge. They clanged tightly to each other. Suddenly, Yamaro slipped and fell. Suho tried to grab her hand. Hearing noises outside, the principal opened the window but saw nothing unusual. Then the principal left. She requested the security guard to give her the room key. Suho carried the female lead into the room. He held her hand to calm her down after she regained composure. She then noticed his wound was bleeding heavily. She quickly bandaged it, urging him not to move to avoid worsening it. When she come back, she realized the door had been locked from. It was getting late, the roommate anxiously went to find the security guard. Luckily, he had a spare key for another room. They rushed to open the door. Suho decides to leave immediately that night. The security guard leads them out. But the police were waiting outside, so they had to bring Suho back to the room. Open house day is approaching. This is a special event held only once a year. The school organizes fun activities and opens its doors to visitors for socializing. All the girls are excited to meet their potential partners on that day. Yamaro knows this is a rare chance to help Suho leave the school. They carefully plan their escape. Meanwhile, the police search Suho's dorm for information. Kwante is surprised to learn Suho is a North Korean agent. He pledges to notify the police promptly of any news concerning Suho. Despite having no leads on Suho, the police remain vigilant. Suho is currently training, preparing for an upcoming battle. He knows that after leaving, he won't have the peaceful days like here anymore. While Yamaro is chatting with Bunoke at the phone booth, their three roommates are rushing towards them. Something serious must have happened. When they arrive, they see the principal there as well. The principal calls the three into the office and learns. Hi Ryan and Seal he lost their ring and shoes. They suspect Bunoke because they saw her wearing the missing shoes of another girl in the school. The principal calls Bunoke into the office. She knows that all the missing items in the school were taken by her, so she asks her to return everything to their original places. She will overlook it this time, but only once. Only three days left. There is a rule in the school that on this day, male students must wear suits. Young Aro went home to get his brother's suit for Suho. Upon entering the house, she encountered her stepmother. Without saying a word, she went straight upstairs. Her stepmother said hurtful words about her mother, which made her angry and smashed the photo. Her stepmother then slapped her painfully. Young Aro angrily returned to school. Finally, the highly anticipated open house day has arrived. Today, Donzo wears a beautiful pink dress like a noble lady. Suho steps out in a suit, accompanying her downstairs. They seem like a real couple. In the crowd, a friend pushes her to the center of the dance. 
The crowd cheers loudly. The male lead steps in, inviting her to dance under the admiring eyes and cheers of the crowd. They perform graceful and rhythmic dance steps together. She also recalls the beautiful memories of them. She realizes it was just her imagination. Suho quickly pulls her outside. Young Min is already waiting outside. They have prepared a bicycle. Suho got on his bike and was about to leave. Young Min suggested letting Young Aro go with her to avoid suspicion. She sat on the bicycle, embracing Suho. Suho very happy but still tries to remain calm as he rides with Young Aro away from school. They ride together through streets. Young Aro sits behind, reminding him to visit her at room 207 and to call the school's phone number when he's free, and not to forget her. Suho remains silent. His sadness evident on his face. They reach the school gate. Suho tries to cheerfully bid farewell to Young Aro. She reaches out her hand to stop him. But she left him. Suho decides to give the necklace he always carries with her. Kwante, from upstairs, notices Suho and immediately calls the police. Seal he rushes down to warn Suho to flee quickly. When the police arrive, they find nothing. Kwante is furious and is taken to the police station for questioning. After leaving the school, Suho goes to find Ju. Suho's teammates. It turns out that their superiors have ordered them to cancel their original plan, and a new organization will soon be working with them. Buno K witnesses Suho and Young Aro happily conversing at the event. Out of anger, she calls him into a room to scold her, then she turns to tear the invitation apart to vent her frustration. But but something happened. She realizes that only those with invitations can attend the event. She checks the guest list and discovers that Suho was not invited at all. How he managed to enter the school? She overhears and eavesdrops on her conversation with the security guard, then calls the police to report Young Aro for attempting to claim the 50 million won reward. Buno K confesses to the principal about what she discovered. The principal takes her to the security room, grabbing a suitcase. Inside are Suho's clothes and a blood-stained cloth. The principal angrily fires the security guard. She then warns Buno K not to report to the police. It won't fetch her the reward and will tarnish the school's reputation for covering it up. The principal sends her to call room 207 for a meeting, facing undeniable evidence. They admit to helping Suho and assure that he's just a protesting student, not a North Korean spy. The angry principal expels everyone, Young Aro kneels down, begging for forgiveness for everyone's sake. Moved by her sincere plea, the principal decides to expel only Dong Du and cut off communication for the others. Suho receives a call, learning that Suho is alive, his father is overjoyed. He asks him to return to Pyongyang for a new mission. Suho's father, also North Korea's minister, is having dinner, discussing the Phoenix plan to help Nam Tae ascend to the presidency. Due to the much higher amount demanded by Asia, Nam Tae suggests Chan Su use his position as Minister of Defense to withdraw funds from the state budget. Once the plan succeeds, he promises not to betray Chan Su. After being expelled, Young Aro seeks solace at the church, praying for Suho's safety. She also wishes to meet him again if possible. Suho is also thinking of her, images of her linger in his mind. Maybe his longing is as deep as hers, he's just better at hiding your emotions. The next day, he pretended to be a pastor to approach Professor Han. Suho threatened the professor's son's life to make him cooperate. Professor Han got into a taxi, unaware that the driver was Ju, who immediately drove him away. Han not quickly followed, but at the intersection, Ju's accomplice cut her off. Ju took Professor Han to their base to meet the leader, Nam, and convinced him to cooperate. They planned to secretly return him and his son to North Korea for safety, and he agreed. They split up, Suho went to the mountain hideout for money and weapons, while the others took Professor Han. They'll meet on the boat at 10 p.m. The police intercepted Suho's secret signal, planning to raid the dormitory. Today is the day Young Aro must leave the dormitory. Han not worries Suho won't find her when he returns, so she writes her feelings on paper, hoping Suho will read it someday. Ju is on the mountain to retrieve money for their return. After gathering the money, he heads back with it. Passing by the dormitory fence, he finds Young Aro's paper airplane. Filled with confessions and reproaches. She said she missed him so much, why haven't he called her yet? 
Reading her heartfelt words, Suho feels pained. Suddenly, a drug addict mistakes him for stalking a female student and confronts him. At the same time, the police arrive, and Suho flees. Thinking the police are after him, the addict joins Suho. They hide in a tent on the mountain. The police surround the tent, but find it empty when they break in. Thinking debit collectors had come, the addict trembles in fear. But when he learns they're after Suho, he prepares to attack. A man emerges from the cave, stunning both with his appearance. As the police storm the dormitory, chaos ensues. Kanmu descended to the basement, he was suddenly ambushed by the male lead from behind, they engaged in a fierce struggle. After subduing Kanmu, Suho rushed upstairs only to find the main door surrounded. At the same time, Yelaro came running down from upstairs. Suho turned away, avoiding her surprised gaze, facing a precarious situation. He took Yelaro hostage. Those tears weren't just tears of fear, they were tears of disappointment. She couldn't believe the man she trusted. Haunted by memories day and night, feeling the barrel of the gun against her head. Suho's teammates appeared, leading to a frantic shootout. People panicked and fled upstairs, seeing Yelaro trembling with fear in the corner, Suho knew he had to do something. After 30 minutes of intense gunfire, the National Security Agency's bulletproof team arrived to support the police. Finding himself at a disadvantage, Suho made a daring decision. Suho focused, aiming at the hanging light cord, causing it to fall and diverting everyone's attention. Meanwhile, he armed himself with a grenade, dragging Donzo outside, threatening to detonate it. If they didn't drop their weapons, they would all die. Seeing his cold expression, Kanmu knew it wasn't an empty threat, so he ordered everyone to retreat, staying behind as a hostage to protect everyone. After the police had withdrawn, they gathered everyone in the hall for easier control, and forced three girls to stand guard at the windows, preventing the police from attacking from outside. The weight of guilt overwhelmed Yamaro's head, making her feel extremely torn. If she hadn't helped him that day, would things have come to this? She had aided the enemy, betrayed her country, after wiping the blood from his face, Suho released the two elderly guards, he's still unable to believe that the person he saved was a North Korean spy. At the same time, in the dormitory, Kang Mu's wounds were still bleeding profusely, prompting Yang Aro to try to sit up to bandage them. Seeing this, Ju angrily raised his gun to strike her. Then Suho stepped in to intervene, taking her upstairs to get medical supplies. She didn't utter a word, and between them, it felt like they were strangers. That makes him very uncomfortable, he really wants to explain it to her. On the stairs, he pulls her back from minds he set up, prompting her to finally speak up. She asks if he's really a spy. So, all this time she's harbored a spy, huh? He gently reminds her not to be too curious or else she'll end up dead. Young Aro goes down to treat Kanmu's wounds. She deeply regrets helping Suho and causing him to suffer like this. Kanmu comforts her. Kanmu signals to Dongzo to bring him the medical kit for self-defense. Outside, Han and the team are planning an attack. Chief Andy comes in to warn them not to act on their own. Because Defense Minister's daughter Young Aro is inside. When Minister Chansu learns that his daughter is being held hostage, he anxiously calls the North Korean Defense Minister, hoping he'll order the release of the hostages. Learning of Suho's attack by South Korean police, the North Korean Defense Minister is furious. He threatens to cancel Operation Phoenix if he doesn't ensure Suho's safe return home. Minister Chan Su is forced to go to the scene to find an opportunity to release Suho and his teammates. Nam Tae immediately heads there upon receiving the news. To facilitate communication between the two sides, the police set up a phone outside. Suho asks Kwang Tae to come get it. When Si Suho is standing at the door, Han Na, losing her composure, stands up and aims the gun straight at him. A teammate deflected the bullet with a club. Ju, seeing the other's anger, shot frantically from the floor. Suho has to risk rushing out to grab Kwang Tae and phone inside. Minister Chan Su arrives, hearing this, he's extremely angry. He orders Han Na out of this, then calls Suho telling him to keep the hostages safe. In 30 minutes, go through the secret tunnel, he'll secretly take him back home. To increase credibility, he also sends him a signal. Suho goes to Ju's room to get the radio and turns it on, the station plays a song. While in the military, his superior told him that when this song is played on Pyongyang's channel, it means the orders have changed and he must execute them unconditionally. He reminds his teammates to prepare to execute the plan. Before leaving, he looks young Aro for a while. She is asleep at this time. He tries to memorize her face because leaving this time might mean never seeing her again. Meanwhile, near Udo Island, a South Korean naval ship collided with a North Korean vessel. 
In the heat of the moment, South Korean sailors sank the North Korean ship. Unsure of how to explain it to their counterparts, Secretary Nam decided to deceive when the protagonist and his team went out through a secret tunnel. Police launched a secret ambush on them. Sensing danger, Suho signaled his teammates to retreat inside. As the headlights came on, they immediately shot one of his teammates in the leg. Suho quickly shattered the light and threw a smoke bomb to blind the enemy. Worried for his daughter's safety, Minister Chan Su grabbed the radio. He ordered the police to retreat as chaos erupted inside Kan Mo. Encountering Ju who was retreating, he raised his gun, demanding the hostages return to their positions. Ju rushed at him, causing bullets to FL, shattering the window and injuring Young Aro's hand. After a heated dispute, Kan Mu gained the upper hand, only to be shot out by Su Ho. Out of anger, Ju stood up to give him a beating. He even pulled out his gun to send Kan Mu on his way only to be stopped by Suho. He advised Ju to keep a cool head in this time, noticing the injury on Young Aro's hand. He feeling heartbroken, with their teammate also injured, ordered her to accompany them with the medical kit. Sat by, watching him tend to their teammate's wounds. On the way back, the protagonist pulled her back, sitting down to bandage her up. Despite her resistance, Suho persisted in holding her hand, this time she didn't resist. She said if he felt guilty about her, then he should release everyone, she would stay. But he said that tomorrow he would find a way to get her out to repay her for saving their lives, then we wouldn't owe each other anything. Hearing those words, her heart tightened. Turns out, to him, the time they spent together was just a matter of repaying a life debt, and yet she had once thought he had genuine feelings for her. The next day, Suho requested South Korea to send a doctor to help treat their injuries within 20 minutes. Minister Chan Su also negotiated to release some hostages. They couldn't find anyone suitable. So Chief Secretary Nam Tae decided to bring his girlfriend, Dr. Kong, to meet the demands. Because she's timid and hesitant, she initially refused as she reluctantly agreed upon hearing his sweet words. Han Na was also tasked with disguising herself as a nurse to accompany Dr. Kong and assist everyone. According to the agreement, Suho would release some people first. He got a list from the principal and prioritized who with underlying conditions. Among the nine people released were three from room 207. His sparked a wave of debate among the students in the school. But when she heard her name, Young Aro refused to stand up. Buno K stood up, criticizing Young Aro for all the trouble. Why was she being released while others weren't? She demanded a redraw, but she didn't know that the last person the protagonist chose to release was her. She had ruined her own chance. At that moment, the police also brought in Dr. Kong and Han Na, after making sure they weren't carrying any weapons. Suho called Dr. Kong in to treat their teammate. Upon seeing Dr. Kong, the protagonist's face showed clear surprise. Have they knew each other before? When everything was settled, Suho decided who would be released again, and Young Aro was still among them. Just then, a female student began to have difficulty breathing, so she wanted to give up her spot to her. Seeing this, everyone clamored to be let out. Young Aro revealed to the protagonist that she was the daughter of the Minister of Defense. She asked him to release everyone else and keep her behind. Hearing this, the protagonist was shocked into silence. He told her she wouldn't have another chance to be released. He declared that due to Young Aro's refusal to leave, only nine people would be released. Angry, Young Aro demanded he release one more person. Suho pointed the gun at her, said that. Who do you think you are? To me, you're just a human-shaped shield. Young Aro's eyes lead became desperate. Each word was like a knife stabbing straight into the female lead's heart. She tried to scrutinize him to see why it was still that face. That person, yet so different. He ordered Young Aro to stand guard at the window. Due to suspicions about Young Aro's words, Suho met with the principal and learned the truth. She truly is the daughter of Defense Minister Chan Su. Son of the North Korean minister and daughter of the South Korean Defense Minister. They've always been on intersecting paths. Meeting only once, they could never have a beautiful outcome. Meanwhile, Suho meets with Dr. Khan to inquire about their teammate's injury. She signals him to stay silent. Because there are bugs planted on the walls, she then shows him the words written on her arm. This reveals that the dormitory is bugged, and South Korean special forces will soon storm in. Knowing they're being played, Suho goes to talk to Kan Mo. He intentionally lets the outsiders hear that he's rigged explosives throughout the building. If they dare to mess around, he'll press the button and die with the 70 hostages. Hearing this, the minister and his secretary immediately deploy a different plan. The next day, true to his promise, Suho lets Han Na release freedom for 10 people. There's just over a week left until the presidential election. The leadership needs to quickly free the hostages to gain the trust of the South Korean people. Knowing that the North Korean agent is carrying 300 billion won, Minister Chan Su calls North Korean Minister Lim, who is also Suho's father, to discuss the killing of the three North Korean agents in the dormitory, and then he will return the money to Minister Lim. 
Though a leader, Minister Lim is also a loving father. He disagrees and insists on returning all three without harm. The secretary steps in, informing Minister Lim that someone needs to see him. The North Korean minister calls Chan Su again, instructing him to kill all three and return the money. After overhearing her phone call, the secretary reported back to Minister Lim that he was just pretending to be a good father figure. Ju found the hidden rifle in Dr. Kang's bag. He got angry, physically assaulted Dr. Kong, then brought her to the window to kill her to warn the people outside not to deceive them again. But Suho stopped him. While they struggled, accidentally kicking the gun towards the young Aro's leg. She bent down to pick up the gun and pointed it at them, trembling, telling him to let Dr. Kong go. Suho advised her to drop the gun because it could hurt her. Kong Mu asking Ju to spare Dr. Kong because his teammate was severely injured. If he killed the doctor, no one would dare to come here anymore. Just as Ju dropped the gun, snipers outside shattered the glass door. Ju immediately crazily rushed out, firing back at them, while Suho immediately embraced her, shielding her from bullets. In the end, as he was kneeling down, he accidentally dropped the toy plane he picked up the day before, and she held the toy plane up. She didn't expect him to have read those words and always kept the toy plane with him. She hoped he would say something, but he once again disappointed her. He went to grab the toy plane from Yangaro's hand and then took her to the window. Han Na ran out to call the special forces to rescue the hostages, but as there was no order from higher-ups, no one dared to act. After being led by South Korean leaders, deceived too many times, Suho called Minister Chan Su, informing that he would kill someone within the next 10 minutes to punish them for deceiving him. After hanging up, he went outside to remove all the eavesdropping devices installed in the dormitory, leaving the leaders outside in confusion about what was happening. Ju going downstairs to bring Dr. Khan up to the room, she had already revealed her true identity. Dr. Khan is a high-ranking Kuda North Korean agent, sent to bring them back to their country safely. She told Suho to check the new instructions. After they decrypted them, the leaders had reached an agreement with South Korea, demanding they not kill any hostages and return home within 10 days. At midnight while everyone was asleep, Suho went downstairs, took Young Aro to his room to eat. It had been days since she had anything to eat, and she looked frail and sickly. She proactively asked him about the paper airplane, why he had it. Was it because he saw it that he returned to the dormitory? Then on TV, news was broadcasted that her older brother had passed away. Knowing that her loved one had passed away, Young Aro immediately ran off. She wanted to go out to find out the truth. Suho chased after her, pulling her back. She was in pain, hitting him and asking why they did this. What had he done wrong? Faced with her words and actions, the male lead didn't resist. He tried to calm her down until Young Aro fainted from exhaustion. After taking her to rest, Dr. Khan called him outside. She reminded him not to let personal feelings affect the greater cause and trust the country completely. Young Aro woke up from a nightmare. Seeing her tense and struggling to breathe, Dr. Kong approached to help her, but when she unbuttoned her shirt, Dr. Kong saw the necklace. She remembered that Suho had once said this necklace was more important to him than life itself. As she was lost in thought, Young Aro grabbed the necklace and ran out. She asked Suho to let her go outside to attend her brother's memorial service, but he refused. He took her back to the gathering area and went upstairs to get the towel her brother had given Young Aro. Seeing her brother's keepsake, Young Aro burst into tears. The next day, she seemed lost, not eating or drinking, causing great concern. Dr. Kong advised Suho to release 30 people to make it easier to control. She asked him if he wanted to release anyone. Suho said to keep the defense minister's daughter and release anyone else. 30 hostages were released, but Young Aro and her roommates remained. Perhaps he wanted to keep those three to take care of her during these difficult days. While went to the kitchen, Boon Ok accidentally discovered the bag of money in the male lead's weapon stash. At this moment, the drug addict son of the security guard ran in, stole the money. But unfortunately, there were no bullets in the gun. Realizing his mistake, seeing that he intended to shoot the drug addict, Kong Mu challenged him to dare to shoot him. Because the superiors had ordered not to kill any hostages, So So Lu looked up them in the prayer room. Here, the security guard showed Kong Mu the secret path to lead to the tent. 
He followed the guard's instructions, ran outside to call the special forces team and then rescued the hostages. But when they received orders from Nam Tae, they fired guns to force him to return. Kang Mu returned to the basement and discovered the principal's eavesdropping room, arranged to control the students. He coincidentally heard the previous conversation between Dr. Kong and Su Ho. He discovered the leaders of both nations were collaborating on the Phoenix plan to aid Nam Tae's presidential bid. After learning about Kang Mu's situation, Su Ho called Nam Tae to ask why he had to fire a gun to force him back. Nam Tae reminded him to keep a close eye on Kan Mo. After the presidential election, they will take him and his teammates back to their country. Kan Mu now understands, they never intended to rescue the hostages. They only used this incident to run for president and then kill everyone. Kan Mu told Su Ho this and hoped he could help save everyone. But he remains loyal to his homeland. He chooses to trust and be willing to sacrifice for the honor of the country. Three days since his brother's death, Young Aro really wants to go out to see him one last time, she goes to ask Kanmu if he can help her. But he advises her not to be aggressive because Su Ho is holding a bomb inside him, and if pushed into a corner, he will detonate it here. When Ju takes Dong Du to the toilet, Su Ho tells him to return to watch the hostages and hands Young Aro over to him. Alone in the room, she queries him about the paper airplane. Su Ho says he found it behind the dorm, and he also said that he doesn't want to harm anyone. After a few days, everyone will be released and everything will end. Actually, Suho really wants to let her go right now, but he can't do that. As he turns to leave, Young Aro stands up and hugs him from behind. Suho also turns back to hug her tightly, seizing that moment. She takes the bomb from Suho and questions him why he said he didn't want to hurt anyone but placed a bomb in the dorm. He explains that he did it for self-defense. There are hundreds of police outside. As a team leader he had to do that to protect himself and his subordinates. But at this moment, she can't hear anything anymore. Young Aro takes the bomb and runs outside, Suho quickly follows. After struggling for a while, he manages to get it, asking her to trust him this time. Watching she suffer and mentally collapse over the past few days has made him extremely uncomfortable. But there's nothing he can do for you except stand by and watch. Being observed by the Dr. Kong outside, her expression is very perplexing. After learning that the principal listened to the whole dorm, Kang Mu directly asked if she was a North Korean spy. Upon hearing Kang Mu's question, she splashed a glass of water on his face. At this moment, the male lead came to take Kang Mu to the room, he punched him. Kang Mu explained that he did it only to prevent Young Aro from escaping. Kang Mu once again advised him to cooperate with him because he was sure that the North Korean government had also abandoned them by now. Although the male lead previously said he still trusted his country's leadership, through the events that had occurred, doubts had already arisen in his heart. He just didn't want to believe that his father could sacrifice his son for power. The male lead told Kang Mu. Tomorrow when Han Na brings in the supplies, tell her to find evidence proving what he said is true. After carelessly let young Aro Lee get the bomb, Dr. Kong asked him to give the bomb back to her and reminded him to keep the revolutionary spirit or she will kill him. The next day, Han Na brought in the supplies and some items as requested by Suho. Han Na was very surprised to learn that Kong Mu and Suho had teamed up. He told her about his speculations and advised her to find evidence proving that the South Korean leadership had planned to kill all the hostages, then bring it here in the next supply transport. After everything is done, Han Na took 30 more hostages outside. Bunoke discovered the hidden walkie-talkie in the trash can. After going outside, Han Na secretly planted a bug on Nam Tae's desk. She heard the conversation between Nam Tae and Minister Chan Su. Nam Tae said he would kill all the hostages to ensure a smooth election, but Minister Chan Su didn't want that, warning that the media wouldn't overlook this. But everything didn't go smoothly for long. Nam Tae's subordinate discovered the listening device. He assumed the delivery guy installed it, so he immediately went to find him. In fact, this delivery guy is a reporter on Han Na's side. He monitored and found out that all the released hostages were being taken to a hospital, waiting to be disposed of. The delivery guy met Han Na to inform her of the evidence he had collected. Just then, the male lead asked Kong Mu to contact Han Na to ask if she had found anything. While they were about to tell Kong Mu, Nam Tae's men arrived. Han Na timely hid the recording she obtained under the car seat before both of them were taken away. Inside the dormitory, everyone planned to escape together. Taking advantage of the spies' inattention, the principal gave Dong Du the key to her secret room. The next morning, the students, signing consecutive days of personal hygiene deprivation, made them feel very uncomfortable. 
hoping Suho would let them wash their faces while retrieving personal items in their rooms. Yonaro took an electronic watch timer and threw it into the basement. Hearing a strange noise, Chu cautiously went down to the basement to investigate. Yonaro ran to the principal's room, opened the secret room, and hid inside. When she realized it was just an electronic watch, Chu knew she had been tricked. He immediately escorted all the students back to the lobby and informed Suho that Yonaro had escaped. Immediately, he and Ju split up to search. The principal led students to the prayer room and then escaped through a secret passage. Kong Mu found Dr. Kong and told her that Yonaro was on the fourth floor waiting for her to leave together. He escorted her upstairs. After she entered the room, he locked the door from the outside. She realized her identity had been exposed. As Kong Mu left, Dr. Kong smashed the window to exit. Suho entered the principal's room. Hearing someone enter, Yonaro nervously dropped the tape recorder. That noise alerted the male lead that she was in the room. She fearfully covered her mouth to prevent any noise. Suho advises her to trust him, he will definitely take her out safely. Hearing the familiar knock on the door, Dong Du softened her heart, it was a special sign of them. She remembered the days with him before, the beautiful days with only him and her. No guns, no national discrimination. Kang Mu entered, they rushed in recklessly. With the experience of a North Korean agent, he quickly subdued him. But when Suho saw Yang Aro about to attack him, he lost focus. Seeing that opportunity, Kang Mu immediately turned the situation around. He forced him into the prayer room, helping people defuse the bomb to escape. But as everyone was about to run out, Dr. Kang appeared, holding a detonator and demanded all hostages to return. Quante still intentionally opened the door. She immediately detonated a section of the school. After that horrifying explosion, Chan Su was extremely worried. He asked Suho to take his daughter to the cafeteria to prove she was still safe. Suho went down to take Dong Du out as promised. Seeing her about to reveal the doctor's identity, Ju immediately pulled out a gun. Fortunately, Suho rushed to save her life. He embraced Dong Du, doing his best to protect her, after a bullet exploded. His hand was seriously injured. Dr. Kong angrily relieved her of pain. Seeing his beloved girl injured, he was extremely saddened but more painful than that was he couldn't do anything. Because that's their superior. While Suho took them down to the basement, Kang Mu persuaded him to request Han Na to bring in supplies. Because he believed that Han Na had heard something. Parents of students have also caused chaos out of concern for their children. Nam Tae suggested that the protagonists make a video to send back to them to prove that all 34 hostages are safe. Taking this opportunity, Suho immediately requested for Han Na to bring in a camera. Dr. Kong ordered Ju to pay attention to Suho because she knew he was thinking against the party. Ju also revealed to her that she was assigned by the deputy minister for a special mission to pay attention to the team captain, Suho. When she saw him having strange thoughts, killed him mercilessly. At this point, Dr. Khan only thought about Suho's words earlier. They suspected from the beginning and were ready to kill someone. So will they overlook the 300 billion won to save their special forces? In the North Korean side at this moment, the deputy minister learned that Dr. Kang's identity had been compromised. This would both help strengthen their finances and consolidate power as her son sacrificed for the country, but the minister still appeared as a compassionate father, refusing because how could he find happiness when the victory is exchanged for his son's life? Seeing the determination of the minister, the deputy minister had to order to kill all hostages. To keep Dr. Kang's identity secret, since the principal was detained, Dr. Kong used money to buy a Bunoke device to manage the students in the dormitory, and promised that after finishing the job, they would kill all hostages to prevent it. Bunno knew that after finishing the job, they would kill all hostages, including her, so she secretly used a walkie-talkie found in the restroom the previous day to contact the police outside. On this side, Han Na, after being released, immediately ran to retrieve the evidence she had hidden in the car the day before to give to Suho. After listening to the recording, Suho was sure that his suspicions were correct. But he still insisted that his father had lost his leadership. He ran to the communication room, used the walkie-talkie to contact his teammates outside, and learned that his father still had full. Only then did Suho believe that his father had abandoned his son to get the 300 billion won. He remembered the past, realizing that he was just a child adopted by him, when his younger sister was seriously ill and needed treatment. He begged him to save his sister's life and promised to risk his life to repay him. Although he knew that from the beginning, he was adopted by him for political purposes, but when he learned that the person he called father for more than 10 years was willing to sacrifice himself for power, he truly felt painful. They devoted themselves, ready to sacrifice for the country, but what did they get in return? Suho freed Kang Mu with Young Aro and the principal in the basement. He decided to evacuate everyone with him safely. 
They plan together to capture all the spies. Kan Mu entered the room with a gun, threatening Dr. Khan so Suho could approach and take her gun, then knocking her into a chair. Knowing that Suho had joined forces with him, Dr. Khan angrily cursed him as a traitor. This inadvertently was overheard by Buno K passing by. She ran downstairs to report to Ju that Dr. Khan had been captured. While he was carefully eavesdropping inside, Suho emerged from the room with a gun. Seizing the opportunity, Kong Mu from behind aimed a gun at his head to control him. Suho played the recording that Han Na obtained for Dr. Kong and Ju to listen to, but they remained unmoved. Buno K ran downstairs to inform Young Aro that the spies had been captured and called Young Aro upstairs with everyone else. Having been tied up under the basement for days, Young Aro had no idea that she had been bribed by the spies, so she went with her. But halfway there, Buno K pulled out a gun to threaten Young Aro into following her. She pushed Young Aro into the room where the others were talking, using her own life to demand Suho and Kong Mu to untie Dr. Kong and Ju. The principal walked in and pulled Young Aro out. She stood in front of Bunoke's gun and told her to shoot herself, and in her excitement, Bunoke actually fired the gun, but luckily, there was no bullet in the gun, and at this point, she realized that Dr. Khan was just being manipulated. Suho and Khan Mu let everyone know that the leadership of South Korea had no intention of rescuing the hostages, they only used this matter to campaign. After the election ended with no survivors, Suho and the Khan Mu hoped everyone would cooperate with them to safely get out of there. To express their willingness, Suho allowed everyone to move freely within the dormitory. Bunoke immediately ran back to the room to use the walkie-talkie to contact the chief, planning to reveal that the Kanmu and Suho were joining forces. Then the Kanmu rushed in, grabbed the walkie-talkie. He advised Bunoke to obediently listen to them. The next day, Han Nam brought a camera and food inside as requested by Suho. They discussed together if there was any way to expose the plans of the Namte group. Han Na suggested copying the recording and spreading it to the press and television stations. Suho go to get the tape to make multiple copies. He tenderly saw the tapes that he had bought for Donzo, inside which recorded her confessions of love to him. I wonder how it feels to love at first sight, but the moment I saw him, I immediately felt it. Our hands, even though they just touched for a moment. Is this perhaps first love? Every word from the female lead is saturated with feelings for Suho. How happy she was to meet him, thinking it was the luckiest moment of her life. But fate loves to toy with people, and just because they hold dual citizenship, they couldn't be together. Dr. Kong, blinded by the flash in the elevator, sits recalling the past. When she slipped and fell off a cliff while on a mission, Suho saved her, and they braved a snowstorm together. At their parting, Dr. Kong promised that if they ever met again, she'd repay his life-saving kindness. The next day, Suho and Kong Mu take Dr. Kong and Ju to the basement, Defying Kan Mu's words, Dr. Kong requested a cup of coffee, noticing her change in attitude, Kan Mu sent her back to the room. Seeing even a high-ranking agent show signs of betrayal, Ju let Suho know that their superiors knew from the start that Suho could betray the country at any time. So they tasked Ju with monitoring Suho and could kill him if he deviated from his ideology. He emphasizes to Suho that from the start, he was the one abandoned by the country. Hearing this, Suho is deeply hurt and walks away to the upper floor. After hearing the tragic fate of Suho, Young Aro sympathizes deeply with him. They enter their familiar room. The female lead puts her things in the coffee pot for him. She says it's the kind of coffee her mother liked the most. She also says that after drinking the coffee, one would forget a sad event in the past. He smiles at her whimsical thoughts, but also takes a sip and says he wants to forget the moment when he aimed the gun at Young Aro's head. Although it hurt her and disappointed her deeply, but after the events of the past few days, Young Aro understands that he did so reluctantly. She takes a sip of the coffee and says, I want to forget that too. Her words are an admission that she has forgiven his actions. Suho takes another sip and says he wants her to forget this moment too. And then he gently kisses Young Aro, knowing that Dr. Kang's thoughts are wavering. Suho comes to persuade her, untying her. While Suho goes inside to make himself a cup of tea, Dr. Khan lightly grabs the pen on the table, advancing to attack him from behind. Suho quickly seizes the pen, but he doesn't retaliate against the doctor. He asks her if his father ordered her to eliminate him, then hands her the pen to decide. It's then that Dr. Khan learns that Minister Lim is Suho's father. She shows sympathy for his situation and partly loses trust in Minister Lim GOC. If he can't even show mercy to his own son, then can agents like her and Comrade Ju expect him to ensure their safety? Meanwhile, Minister Lim receives a report stating that Kong Mu and Suho colluded to rescue the hostages. While both Dr. Kong and Ju are arrested, who informed him? 
On the other hand, Secretary General Namte also receives word from Minister Lim and Furious, calling and warning him that he will be denounced by the entire country. Han Na, after leaving, immediately transforms into her pink bunny, infiltrating the broadcasting station to spread the evidence. Yet strangely, the media doesn't report anything the next day. It turns out all that evidence was seized by Namte's men and brought back to him. Realizing they want to sabotage her good deed, he orders his men to plant bombs around the school on Namte's side. Chansu also learns that Han Na is the one who sent evidence to the broadcasting station. They order her arrest. As Han Na drives up, two polices inform her that Secretary Nam Tae wants to see her. Sensing something amiss, she immediately turns the car around and flees. After learning that Kang Mu colluded with Su Ho was exposed, they quickly track down the spy in the dormitory. Kang Mu searches every room and checks the files of everyone. Feeling suspicious of the janitor and the cook in the canteen, they search the janitor's room but find nothing suspicious. At this moment, Kang Mu remembers the cook's words to him. Someone had stolen with the chicken in the fridge. They immediately rush to check and find a walkie-talkie hidden in the chicken. They call the cook and janitor up to question them. When Kang Mu asks her if she's a North Korean spy, the cook panics and hides under the table. Security guard rushes over to calm her down and reveals to the two of them that because she experienced war as a child, she is easily agitated. Unable to bear it, she left her homeland of North Korea and fled to South Korea, cooking in dormitories ever since. Upon learning that the chef is from North Korea, Everyone suspects her of being a spy, but Suho thinks otherwise. However, he doesn't have time to investigate as everyone in the dormitory is now in a very precarious situation. South Korean special forces have been mobilized and may storm in to rescue Young Aro and then blow up the entire area. Upon learning this, the female lead requests to see her father. Suho contacts Minister Chan Su, arranging to meet him at 10 p.m. tonight at the tent behind the mountain and insists he comes alone. That night, Minister Chan arrives as agreed. As he steps out, Young Aro confronts him, questioning if he plans to kill everyone because of winning the election. To his daughter's question, he denies any such intention. She pleads with him to save everyone because it's all her fault. How can she live well when her friends are dying? Despite Suho's vigilance, a South Korean commando shoots him. Young Aro risks her life to shield him and pulls him into the house. Minister Chan Su orders the ceasefire, but no one listens to him, and he gets shot by his own men. Suho takes Young Aro into the bunker, when upon seeing him, Ju had mocking words, a soldier of the Great Republic who secretly loves the daughter of the South Korean Minister of Defense. Boonoke okay overhears their conversation, surprised to learn that Young Aro is the daughter of the Minister of Defense. Exploiting this, she devises a plan to ensure her own survival. Young Aro, upon learning her father is injured and being treated in the hospital, is heartbroken. My brother and mother have abandoned me, now only my father is left. Even though all the characters and viewers know Nam Tae deliberately tried to assassinate Minister Chan Su. However, the media reports that a North Korean spy attacked the Minister of Defense while he was negotiating the hostage release. Nam Tae's plan is to use this to charge in and kill everyone, then blame the North Korean spy for killing the hostage. As predicted, that night, the special forces attack the dormitory. They throw tear gas into the building, causing panic among the people. In the midst of the crisis, Dr. Kong proposes a plan. When Nam Tae rushes in, Su Ho uses Dr. Kong as a hostage to threaten Nam Tae. She comes out terrified, crying and begging Nam Tae to back off to save herself. Throughout history, heroes struggle with beautiful women, and a scoundrel like Nam Tae is no exception. He reluctantly orders a retreat, canceling the plan. Although he has escaped this time, Nam Tae can attack at any moment. They discuss together and come up with a plan to respond. Dr. Kong suggests letting her go outside to get Nam Tae's money intended for a deal with North Korea. However, Hapo distrusts her and worries that after she gets the money, Nam Tae will take action. Suho proposes to warn Minister Chan Su's wife, telling her that the ruling party's secretary general, Nam Tae deliberately attempted to assassinate Minister Chan Su. He believes that after she knows this, she will try to stop Nam Tae to save her daughter. Han Na has disguised herself as a doctor and infiltrated the hospital to inform Minister Chan Su's wife of this news. She immediately went to the crime scene. She warns Nam Tae not to mess around, threatening to disclose to the government why Minister Chan Su was injured before leaving the dormitory. Dr. Kong expresses to Su Ho her desire that after successfully obtaining the money, they can flee to another country together, but Su Ho says he must return so his younger sister can continue living. Kong Mu calls Han Na, revealing to her that Dr. Kong is a North Korean spy and instructs her to pay attention to all of her movements. 
After seeing her acquire the money, immediately snatch that money back here to rescue the hostages and kill Suho and his teammates. Suho, who is outside, overhears the entire conversation between the two and rushes to punch Kan Mo, then asks him if all of them are backstabbers. A few minutes ago, he received an order from his superiors to embrace the bomb along with the hostages. Now he realizes that the person he trusted wants to eliminate him. He goes down to the prayer room where young Aro is also there praying for his father, and they talk about the future together, imagining if they were just ordinary people living in a world without war, without barriers. How happy would they be, but unfortunately, that's just a dream that cannot come true. Suho promises that he will definitely protect her and everyone safely. Donjo looks at him for a while and asks, so who will protect you? Indeed, since childhood, he has had Minister Lam as his father to protect his younger sister, and as he grew up, he became a special agent to serve the country. Now he is trying his best to protect the one he loves and the innocent people, never once being protected by others. He persuades Ju to comply, knowing that his superior is always at odds with his father. After some conversation, Ju agrees, sending a message to the deputy minister about Dr. Khan going to get the money Nam Tae intends to give them. Upon receiving the news, she immediately arrests Minister Lim and orders Ju to kill Suho immediately. In the hospital, Minister Chan Su has called Han Na, trusting her because she informed his wife. Previously, he suspected Han Na was colluding with Suho. Minister Chan Su asks her to use the walkie talkie to talk to Suho telling him that he will prepare a car for him and his teammates to escape, then take all the hostages outside, then set off the bomb, so that everyone thinks he and his teammates embrace the bomb themselves. This way, their families in North Korea will not be in danger, but young Aro is still not reassured. She talks to her father and says she will ride with Suho until she sees him safely away. But as soon as hangs up, his wife reminds him that this is the time for career advancement. One should not show mercy to those who know about the election scandal, and at the same time, the president calls him to exert pressure, he could only silently change plans. Suho and Young Aro are feeling sad now because they are about to part ways. He removed the necklace from his neck and put it on her again. Young Aro promised that the next time they met, he would definitely return it to him, after knowing that the mod would release everyone. Buno K feared that they would reveal her collaboration with the spy, so she called Director in to prevent them from taking the hostages out, but he didn't care, and even asked her not to contact him anymore. When the principal found out that Buno K had reported, he was extremely angry, while the two argued, he accidentally dropped a photo of her with Buno K's sister. The principal revealed to her the truth that he and Buno K's sister used to be close friends. However, Buno K's sister stole her fiancé, who was a staunch opponent of the dictatorship. So Buno K's sister was arrested by Director In and tortured to death. Dr. Kong knocked out a South Korean special agent and then wore his clothes. Sneak into the dormitory in time to save Suho when he was about to be killed. Nam Tae ordered the special forces team to blow up the dormitory at 10 p.m. But by then, Minister Chan Su had arrived to arrest him for harboring a spy. Faced with baseless accusations, he immediately denied it, saying that he and Dr. Kong just had a doctor-patient relationship. Right now, Dr. Kong called him. I brought 300 billion won into the dormitory if you blow up this area, then that money will also turn to smoke. Han Na also presented an intimate photo of Nam Tae and Dr. Kong, he has no words to refute, just letting the police take him away with Director In. Because the plan failed, Minister Lem was stripped. Before leaving, he informed the deputy minister of a truth, that Su Ho, the person she ordered to be killed, is the son she abandoned 18 years ago. And he added that her people are still in the dormitory. As long as she goes against his orders, Minister Lam will order Suho to be killed immediately, but she was not change her mind. She even ordered him to order the spy to kill her son. Suho, after knowing the truth, was very painful, he was abandoned by his foster father, now even his biological mother wants to kill him. Dr. Kong approached Suho and handed him the huge amount of money. The password is the date he saved her, after knowing the deep feeling that Dr. Kong has for Suho. Young Aro just stayed silent and left, but there was someone else eavesdropping on their conversation. It was the security guard, he's the spy planted by Suho's father. As scheduled, but still, no parents or journalists appeared. Kong Mu and Suho feared Minister Chan Su would break his promise, so they called him for questioning. After the male lead threatened not to return the 300 billion won as planned, he risked his daughter's life to promise to save everyone in the dormitory. Suho didn't trust Minister Chan Su, but Kong Mu assured him he would save everyone, and advised him to go with his teammates. He said goodbye to Dong Du on the top floor, she giving him the handkerchief his brother gave her, 
which was very precious to her. She reminded him to make sure to meet again to return the handkerchief, but Suho refused to accept it. He told her not to wait for him because the moment he stepped out of this area, he would forget her existence. Perhaps saying these things wasn't easy for Suho either. But because he knew they couldn't have a happy ending, he said those heartless words. To not ruin the life of the person he loves. Right when the Suho group was about to leave, a female student ran to inform Kanmu and the principal that she saw the security guard using a walkie-talkie, saying he would kill Suho and Dr. Kong. Yumaro immediately ran to stop Suho but was too late. The four of them left in a car but encountered a security checkpoint. Because Suho and Dr. Khan were recognized by the police, they decided to get out and walk through a different route, to let the other two teammates take the car, on this side Han Nan daringly went to jail to save the journalist, then they all went to the broadcasting station. They used the radio to let everyone know about the 33 hostages inside the dormitory, which was a political conspiracy. To serve the upcoming election, although the broadcast wasn't long, it created a fierce media storm. People gathered with signs in front of the school gate protesting, demanding the government to release their children. Minister Chan Su ordered the head of security to bring the hostages and shoot the journalist, realizing things had escalated. The Minister of Defense, who only wanted to save his daughter, the president ordered to replace Minister Chan Su to clean up the mess. Suho and Dr. Kong had arrived at the port. When they were about to get on the boat, the news reported that Minister of Defense and Chan Su had been removed from his position. Knowing that Yang Ro was in danger, he decided to go back to save her. At that moment, the security guard and his comrades arrived. They were the ones who killed Ju and his comrades. He showed no surprise when he found out that he was the spy his father had planted. Suho informed him that Nam Tae had taken control and the situation was dangerous. The security guard cared for Young Aro as if she were his own daughter, so he fought with his comrades to give Suho the chance to save her. Before returning, Dr. Kong gave him money to flee to another country. But he refused because she had sacrificed too much for him already. He couldn't know her anymore. He hoped she could live well and help the relatives of the comrades who had died. Knowing they couldn't survive, Kanmu called Minister Chansu asking him to spare the hostages. He promised to give a statement beneficial to the Ministry of Defense. The minister ordered Chief and to call the journalists and release everyone within the next five minutes. However, Chief Chansu told him that Nam Tae was now in charge of the scene and suggested he leave. Outside, Nam Tae even brought in tanks. He declared he was there to deal with the spies who dared to take innocent people hostage. To save his daughter, Minister Chan Su sabotaged the bomb, angering Nam Tae who punched him. At this time, the minister only trusted Han and A. He ordered Below to release her to meet Black Lake's request. Not failing the expectation, after being released, she hijacked a bus and rushed to the scene. Boon Ok, upon learning of the cruelty of Chi Fin, decided to join forces with everyone. She contacted Chifin and falsely reported that there were some students carrying banners rushing to the rooftop for rescue. This diverted the attention of Nam Tae's men, and the special forces team immediately moved forward. The principal and Kong Mu ordered the students to flee through the tunnel, but a bomb set off by the cook exploded. Suho returned to subdue the guards at the back door to facilitate the escape of the students. At this time, Han Na also arrived with him to take the female students onto the bus, but Kong Mu decided to stay because the principal and Dong Du were still trapped inside. The special forces quickly rushed in, Suho and Kong Mu fought them to protect everyone. The scene was extremely chaotic at this point, everyone rushed down the tunnel to escape, but they were intercepted by the special forces. Suho told Kong Mu to take Yang Aro out while he stayed to fight. But as soon as they reached the door, Young Aro decided to go back. Although they had killed all the people under the basement, Suho was also injured. At this point, all entrances and exits were blocked, so he and Young Aro ran upstairs. Knowing they couldn't survive, Suho used the communication device to contact Nam Tae and said he was holding onto the huge sum of money, and only Young Aro knew the password. He said that to ensure her survival. In no time, the special forces rushed in, he used his body to shield her from bullets, until the final moments of his life. He also did everything to protect the girl he loved. He gave her a cassette tape, instructing her to live well, then looked at Yang Aro being taken away by Nam Tae. So, in the end, both Prime Minister Nam Tae, Minister Chan Su, and Chief In were arrested, a new president was also elected, and life returned to its original orbit. One day, Yang Aro returned to the coffee shop where they first met, she played the tape that Suho gave her. And it were not only heartfelt words that he had never dared to say, since their first meeting at Zemo Cafe. When she reached for those separate sticks with him, he fell in love with her from that moment, if he were just an ordinary guy. He would have asked her out on a date that day, and then we would have become a couple. He wanted to spend time with her at the amusement park and watch movies with her, 
but why did he become someone who shouldn't meet her? But he never regretted meeting her. Thank her for blooming a flower in the heart of a cold person like him. He will leave, but he will always remember her. Young Earl, I love you. The film ends with deep regret, if they were just ordinary people. Born in a world without war, without power struggles, perhaps the outcome would have been different. Alright, the film ends here. Please take 3 seconds to subscribe to our channel to support us. Thank you for watching our channel. See you again in the next film. Thank you so much. Goodbye.